Good morning, everyone. Uh, hello, this is David uh, once again, uh, continuing in the book of Isaiah. Thank you so much for joining me uh, this morning. Uh, if you are watching it in the afternoon, then good afternoon. If you are watching it in the evening, then good evening. Whatever time you watch these videos, whether it be morning, noon, or night, I thank you for following along in our study uh, slash reading of the book of Isaiah, how God spoke through Isaiah, and all the all the wonderful and uh, prophets that that uh, that he had that he. Um, that he used for his purposes and it's just a blessing to read uh so many wonderful wonderful things we have we have today <laughs> we have a treat um we have treats <laughs> i call them golden nuggets or whatever you want to call them um well every time i pick up the word of god i mean it's it's a treat amen and uh, I just find so much joy in reading it, um, reading it for just reading it, uh, just to enjoy it. Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I do in-depth studies and you, could, you actually can go very far in just a, a sentence or a verse. You know, you could do word studies. I mean, you can spend a lot of time in just a verse. Yeah, you know, I know I made... Uh, joke about that in my previous videos uh, but you can you can do in-depth studies and you're more than welcome I, I love reading the word sometimes though just just for what it is uh, I just love enjoy reading God's word amen I just love it I love him and and uh, and so we got some treats today and um, and uh, you're gonna see it's just amazing amazing wonders amazing things that the lord can do amen and uh today we're gonna continue in uh, i believe it's chapter uh 39 i'm not too sure too positive but yes i think it's chapter 38 excuse me we're gonna do chapter 38 and and we'll try to get to chapter 39 but i just hope and, and pray that uh as you begin to watch this and and uh, follow along that that uh that everything is in order in your life right now and if it's not I, I pray for you whoever's listening and watching and as we continue to pray for each other uh, the whole church the body of christ amen um so without further ado let's get on to reading and uh first we'll open up in uh in prayer uh, dear heavenly father as we come before your holy presence god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob Yes, God of Israel, blessed be your name, Holy Holy Father. As we come before your holy presence, my Lord Yeshua, Holy Spirit, all in one, we just ask that you would teach us, that you would counsel us, that you would guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit on what you spoke through your prophets. Uh, today we continue in, the, in what you spoke through your prophet Isaiah, Lord Father God. So. We ask, Lord Father God, I ask that you would give us understanding, uh, give us uh, understanding and knowledge of your word, Lord Father God, for your purposes, for your glory, and for your name's sake, Lord Father God. And may you continue to teach us, for you are our teacher, Lord Father God. You are our shepherd. You are our teacher, Lord Father God. And so we ask that you teach us, that you open up our eyes and ears to your word, and give us understanding of your word, Lord, Father God. And just thank you once again, Lord, Father God. Thank you so much. And I just pray for all those who are watching or listening. May you open up their eyes and ears. May you give them understanding. And may we just enjoy this time spent in your word. Thank you, Abba Father, for speaking to us through your holy prophets, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, for your word. Thank you, Abba. And we pray all these things in in the name of Yeshua, and our Lord, God, and Savior. In your name we pray, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Okay, chapter uh, 38, um, verse 1. Okay, we got some... Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. We got miracles going on here. If you haven't seen 
um, my videos, my channel, I have a, a section called Miracles. Um, maybe I'll continue doing them because there's been other miracles besides the ones I mentioned. Um, but anyhow, uh, we're going to see this. They, they happen in our lives and, and then sometimes they're just major, major healings, major miracles, major deliverances, just amazing things. Uh, so many testimonies. We are living testimonies of our Lord God and and uh, you can't deny them. I, I just love when people are healed uh, from one uh, day to the next uh, from serious illnesses too. You know, it's uh, when you go, when people tell you, you know, and they come and they, they do their testimony and they say, you know, the doctors are bewildered. They're, they're like, uh, this is uh, like impossible <laughs> because they can't really, you know, there has to be a reason, you know, unless the doctor is a born again believer, then uh, he's praising the Lord because he just witnessed a miracle. Amen. But uh, there's there's um, there's miracles that happen. But there's some doctors that that it has to be a reason there just has to scientifically be a reason uh why uh from one day to the next uh this person was dying of a major illness and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore it's not there we can't find it what, what happened to it <laughs> so this why do i say this because god is real okay god is not dead just like that movie you know god is not dead part one part two forevermore god is not dead he is very much real he's still into healing he still works miracles never put god in a box and say he is gone he doesn't exist he's not real Never do this because, I mean, we got some things coming up in this chapter that just blow your mind, okay? And I believe them 100%. I do. I do because I've witnessed miracles happen in my life. I've witnessed miracles happen in other people's lives. Um, uh, you know what? I, I, you know, before I forget, before I forget, and I, and I, and I apologize if this brother ever uh because his mind just popped up into my head because he did a book called miracles i believe uh don't get me wrong on the title but he did do a book called miracles and i was thinking on writing a book called miracles you know and and uh i believe uh well without before i forget his name again <laughs> uh brother craig keener uh brother K craig keener i will put uh, a description in the and the uh, in below because he's a good humble brother, excellent teacher. Uh, I went through a series of teachings. Uh, he's just so humble and he he's uh, he's a good friend of uh, Michael Brown. They did a book together, I believe, Doctor Michael Brown. And so I'm going to bring uh, Doctor Craig Keener. Uh, Craig Keener. He's just he's just an awesome person. I love how he did his teachings and he's just very humble. And uh, so anyhow, uh, on the on the on the uh, subject of miracles, that's why I brought him up. And I had remembered him before uh, because I did some shout outs, you know, and, and uh, please forgive me, Craig, for, for not mentioning you. If you ever hear this, you know, uh, you are a blessing, uh, even though I never met you personally, uh, I feel like, as though I have. Uh, you're a blessing. I will leave uh, your videos down below or, or just uh, at least your books. Amen. So, okay. So without further ado, okay, now we got that out of the way. <laughs> okay. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Okay. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. Okay. Uh, it says, <clears throat> about that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. Now, that first verse in itself, the Lord knows when we each have an appointed day. Okay? The Lord can give you more time as we're going to be reading but the lord also knows when your life is requested when he he is we can't put god in a box once again we cannot he's amazing our thoughts are not his thoughts we we can't even understand the vastness 
the incredible power of, of our Lord God. It's just, it's just amazing, amazing, you know, creator of the universe, you know, it's just so much, there's so much depth, so much depth in our Lord God and King, so much that we don't even know yet. We're, we're just trying to scratch the surface. We know how he is. He's a personal God. He's, he's somebody that loves us. But we can't fully comprehend him. Fully we cannot. But one day we will. One day we're going to know his glory. We're going we're gonna to vast and bask in his glory. And we're going we're gonna to just experience God. But for right now, he just gives us little, little, little tidbits, little golden nuggets, you know. And, and But he is intimate. He loves us and he loves showing himself to us. Amen. So it says right here, he told him when he was going to die. He told Isaiah to tell Hezekiah when he's going to, that he's going to die. To get your, set your affairs in order. It's almost like a, a, a physician tells you, oh, you're going to die. You know, you have this, you have that. You know, set your, your affairs in order. You're going to die. Okay. And he tells him this and then he takes it like we're opening up this verse. It's like it, it is sad. Okay. But at the same time, it, it, watch what he does. Okay. I'm just going to continue reading this. It says, uh, the Lord says, set your affairs in order for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. That's like bad news okay bad news but he's a believer so in other words good news okay bad but yet good okay because none of us want to die and leave our loved ones behind and in, in, in this but we know that that the lord will take us home uh this is why we give our lives to the lord amen and uh we're, we're rest assured you know but no one raises their hand they, they want to die you know and you know to, to die is gain, you know, to, you know, I, I forgot how that goes by Paul, uh, to live, to live, uh, to die is gain, to live, I, okay, I'm sorry, I'm having a mind blank right now, once again, uh, but anyhow, you know, whoever's listening to this, you know what, what verse I'm talking about, okay, very famous, but uh, unfortunately, my mind just went blank on that one, okay, so it says, this is what the Lord says, set your affairs in order, for you are going to die, you will not recover from this illness. Okay, verse 2. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Verse 4. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him. For, so second of all, he goes straight to the Lord. He goes, you know, Isaiah told him this news. He says, okay, I, I know I'm going to die, okay. Um, he says, uh, uh, and he turned to the wall and right away. He just prayed. He prayed. And uh, that goes to show you, you know, an example of... of uh, of what we should do and, and always go to the Lord in prayer, you know, not my will be done, but yours, Lord, you know, and if this is how it has to be, it says, uh, but he kind of took it bad, you know, we're going to see right now. It says, when Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. So, Amen. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. And this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow 
to move 10 steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backward 10 steps. Now, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This, when I, I read this scripture years ago, okay, and it still blows my mind. Because if you sit and you start thinking, just, just, just go over what we just read. You know how ginormous this is? You know how big this is? One thing is for the Lord to know that he was going to die. Okay, of course. Okay, the Lord knows. Okay. Another thing is to uh, add 15 years to a person's life. Okay, miracle. Okay, miracle, ginormous. Even said 15 years. He didn't say 10. He didn't say three. He didn't say two. He just, he said 15. I'm going to give you 15 years more to live. You were going to die. You were going to die. But I'm giving you 15 years more. The Lord can do this. If you have a person in your, in your life, you pray to them. He says, why? Because I heard your prayer. That's why we pray for each other. Now you might have a loved one. You might, and, I, and it's sad when we know that a person will die from a disease or whatnot. But you have to have faith. Now is it guaranteed that you can add, that you can add anything to that person's life as much as you love them? No. But have faith and pray for a miracle. Every day. Now, if the Lord gives you that, your request, if the Lord answers your prayer, it's for His sake. It's for His glory. But it's possible. Never give up faith. It's possible. The Lord could turn things around in a, in a second. A person might be dying that minute. People have died. And the Lord has brought him back from the dead. We know the story of Lazarus. We know what he has done. He has resurrected the dead. So this right here is a miracle. Okay? But check this out. Even more than that. And when I read it, I just stopped and said, Oh my, oh my God. My God, my Lord, look at the power. What has to happen? My question. What has to happen for the sun's shadow? The sun creates a shadow on the ground. Okay, and that shadow, as the day is moving, as the day is going, that... You could sit and look at a shadow on the ground. And if you just stare at the shadow, it's going to move. It's going to move forward or whatever, whatever way it's going to move. It's going to move because the sun is moving. That shadow is moving. Because of the orbit. Because of the orbit. The way the planets circle each other. The way they move. They rotate. So what has to happen for a shadow to move backwards? Do you see the implication here? Back to the Future is, is, is <laughs> that movie. The Lord, I'm going to read it once again. And this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move 10 steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. The sundial is how they measure time. A sundial. A sundial does not move backwards. It moves forwards like a clock. So you're looking at your clock just say, for an example, and you move it back, <laughs> and, 
And it goes backwards, not because the clock is broken, because time just went backwards. He stopped the sun, however he did it. I, I, he's in control of the universe. That's power. We have a mighty God. He moved the sun's shadow 10 steps backward. That means he stopped the orbit. He st just, you, know, you know the implications of what I'm saying. A scientist will say, no way possible. NASA will say, no way possible, unless they're believers. But you think it's impossible for God? He has the universe set so perfectly, so perfectly. I don't know details on how to explain it right now, but I think I've done it in other videos. The planet's orbits and all this is moving, synchronizing so perfectly. And the earth has everything we need to live on it, a human being. Now they're trying to look for other earths and this and that. There is none right now. They can't find one because there is none. There might be some places that may be habitable. Maybe, but not exactly like the earth. We're unique. We are unique. And God is awesome. This is a miracle that I wanted to... This excites me every time I read it. Every time I read it, it excites me. Never put God in a box, amen? Never put God in a box. And don't stop praying for your loved ones and for each other, for each other, for each other's loved ones that might be sick. Amen? Hey Amen. I just I'm glad I got that out because that that yeah. I'm gonna read one more time just to just so you could just like just just grasp it a little more, okay? And this is the sign from the Lord to prove that He will do as He promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backward ten steps. Oh my goodness. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. When King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem. I said, in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. My life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. It has been cut short. As when a weaver cuts cloth from a loom, suddenly my life was over. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lions. Suddenly my life was over. Delirious I chattered like a swallow or a crane. He was really sick. And then I moaned like a mourning dove. He was very sick. He was suffering. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble, Lord. Help me. How many could relate to this? I am in trouble, Lord. Help me. But what could I say? For he himself sent this sickness. Now I will walk, now I will walk humbly throughout my years. Because of this anguish I have felt. Discipline. Lord, your discipline is good. For it leads to life and health. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, this anguish was good for me. For you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins. 
this in my life and I'm sure in plenty of your lives you really didn't understand what was going on discipline the Lord's discipline taken through trials and tests you felt like people may be picking on you the Lord allows you to go through discipline when he loves you and you're like what Yes, he humbles us. He's the potter, we're the clay. He helps us. You say through suffering? Yes, through suffering. Sometimes he, he has to clean, he has to cleanse us, he has to purify us. Just like silver. You got to clean the dross out. You gave your life to him. Now he's sanctifying you. Allowing you to go through things, to build your faith, to humble you. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what we need in our personal lives, in us. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. And in my personal life, I give him thanks for what I've been through. I've been through inside, inside. I've been through some things. And then when now I look back on it, I'm saying, wow, wow. Okay, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to go through that. It was terrifying at one point. Terrifying. And I cried out to him. But now I look back and I said, I never, never. You know how some people say, why, Lord? Why is this happening? My, why are you doing this? I never once said this. Never once. I know there's people who do that. And they say, you know, I know it's okay to get angry at God. I never got angry at God. I never got angry at God. If anything, I felt so, so convicted, so guilty, so... Of, of him, of it, I'd say, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. But never did I shout out, say, why, God, why are you doing this to me? I never did that, honestly. The choices I made in life, I knew I was suffering from bad choices. But I never blamed God. Never did. And never will. My life right now, my life right now, I find true joy and refuge in Him. If you ask me how my security is, as far as my personal life, you could say, wow, this guy doesn't have no security. I'm talking about financial security. I'm talking about a home. I'm talking about all these things. I don't have none of that. None of that. But I have him. Which you cannot put a price on. I have salvation. True salvation inside. Deliverance. And if those who are listening to me know what I'm talking about. You might not have nothing possessions and all this but when you have that that's all you need to begin to go forward people might have a lot of possessions their lives are in order they're secure they have 401ks that's all fine that's all good and dandy but some people don't have that salvation. And that's what they're lacking. And my prayer goes out to them. Truly. Truly. Now, I tr do I trust in the Lord that He's going to take care of me? Yes. I give Him thanks. 
He always gives me food. He always feeds me. He always takes care of me. And now I see. I look back and I say, wow, okay, okay, this is what you were doing. This is what you were allowing to happen in my life. This is what you were doing to bring me to this point. And it's not done yet. It's like, I'm just beginning with you. <laughs> and I say, praise the Lord. Continue to use me as your vessel. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Yeshua. Continue to use me as your vessel. Amen. So it says right here, verse 16, Lord, your discipline is good. He who's humble, he was humble. He knew that he was being disciplined. The Lord knew his heart. The Lord knew that he understood. It's almost as if when King David lost his son, because of what he had done, because he sinned against the Lord. But he was almost in joy because he knows, he said, I'll see my son again. I know this, but the Lord has forgiven me. He has disciplined me for he took my son. I know you know what verse that is, where it's at in the Bible. I can't remember right now. But they watched him as he fell on the floor uncontrollably. They thought he was crying. At first he might have been crying. But then he was full of joy. And then it's like they couldn't understand why. Because he was forgiven. When you know the Lord has truly forgiven you for sinning against him. Whatever it may be. It's a relief. It's like something gets taken off of you unsuppressible joy unsuppressible it's like you can't contain it and you never want to go back <laughs> you don't I don't wow verse 15 I'm going to go back a little it says but what could I say Hezekiah said for he himself sent this sickness now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Verse 16, Lord, your discipline is good, for it leads to life and health. I'm witnessing this right now in my life. You restore my health and allow me to live. I am witnessing, I'm a testimony, a living testimony unto this. And I, I wish I could give you more into my testimony right now. But for those who know me, for those who know what, what I went through, what I've been through. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, verse 17, this anguish was good for me. For you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins. <sighs> Sorry. But he rescued me from death. And he had forgiven all my sins. Oh boy, what a joy. What a joy. These are tears of joy. When that happens in your life, it's like, oh man. It was the most glorious day and I could relive it right now. It was years ago, but I could relive it right now. I could still feel that, that joy that overcame me. I didn't have nothing. I was on the street, but he had given me deliverance. 
He had forgiven me. He had removed it. And to this day, I can remember that day and I can remember that joy and I can still bask in that joy and I can look back right now and I seen what he has done in my life and I can see God, I can see Yeshua. And now I live. I live, truly live. I thought it was going to die. I wanted to die. To continue to live like that, I wanted to die. But he allowed me to live. Truly live. Verse 17, yes, this anguish was good for me, Lord, for you have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins. For the dead cannot praise you. They cannot raise their voices in praise. This is without forgiveness, the place of the dead. The place where your sins are not forgiven. When you don't believe or you reject him. For the dead cannot praise you. They cannot raise their voices in praise. That's it. No more for them. So serious. These, these scriptures are so very serious. About your salvation. A non-believer listening to this. So serious. You don't want to go to that place where he can't hear you no more. Those who are backsliding or, or on the fence. He doesn't like lukewarm. He'd rather you be hot or cold. For the dead cannot praise you. They cannot raise their voices in praise. Those who go down to the grave can no longer hope in your faithfulness. Only the living can praise you as I do today. Each generation tells of your faithfulness to the next. Think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. Think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life. In the temple of the Lord forevermore. Amen. Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, Make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil, and Hezekiah will recover. And Hezekiah had asked, What sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? <laughs> Amen. Isaiah had said, okay, so we're going to go to the next chapter. It's not that long. All right. Uh, chapter 39. Um, amen and amen. Amen. Wow. Envoys, okay. Chapter 39, verse 1. Soon after this, okay, that's why I, I went right into it, okay, because... Uh, from 39, we could have stopped it there at 40 minutes, but you know what? We went straight through because I, I, I refreshed this morning. Uh, Isaiah uh, 38, 39, it kind of bleeds into each other. Uh, like I said, they usually don't have these breaks and scripts, you know, in the, in the manuscripts. So I, I believe it just flows together because it says soon after this, okay, uh, Merodach uh, Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah was delighted with the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries. 
There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Now, either one of two things. Either Hezekiah liked to show off, <laughs> or he was very, uh, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Naive. Naive. Okay, because uh, when you're showing a, a, a king of Babylon, a king, uh, well, maybe you have trust in him that he's not going to rip you off. Okay, but... It's one of two things, you know, but maybe he was just showing off and he shouldn't have because we're going to see what happens. Okay, this is the king of Babylon, okay? It says, uh, chap, uh, verse 3, Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and he, and he asked him, What did those men want? And where are they from? You know, and Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. And what did they see in your palace? I asked Isaiah. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own. All my royal treasuries. I'm like, wow, okay. So he just blew it right there. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen, listen to this message from the Lord of Heaven's armies. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to, uh, then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good. It's like, what? When I read this, I was like, what? For the king was thinking, at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. That is wrong. Okay, I'm like, what? He actually went there. You know, the Lord delivered him. The Lord gave him 15 more years. The Lord restored his health. The Lord showed himself mighty to him, heard his prayer. Okay, and then this is what he thinks. Isaiah told him, you, you, this palace is going to be invaded. You know, this, and then he's, he knows that he has security for the next 15 years. Okay, so he's kind of saying, well, I'll, 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 I won't experience this. At least I'll have peace and safety for a while. It's like, come on, that's being, you know, come on. Very selfish, right? Uh, to say the least. Okay, so it says, uh, then Hezekiah said, once again, listen to this message from the Lord. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasuries, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now will be carried off to Babylon. That's the coming empire, Babylon, Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's kings. Then Hezekiah said, This message you have given me is good. <laughs> wow. For the king was thinking, at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. Oof. Okay, so uh, as we see, the heart is desperately wicked. Okay. Um, but, uh -huh. don't uh, please, Lord, never allow me to get, get like that. <laughs> so, um, Amen and amen. So we'll we'll leave it at that. Uh, kind of incredible how how people persons can do that after being relieved and being uh, healed. You know how they could just you know get like that. You know and just forget about what the Lord says and and did not have compassion on others. You know even some of his sons uh, will be taken to exile. He just told them some bad news. Some bad news. You know. Um, but he he uh, was acting very selfish there. So a lot of things to glean and to learn from, to humble ourselves always, even if the Lord has blessed you with with uh, uh, prosperity or a good job, and always always know that that the Lord is the one who does and allows these doors to open for you. Be grateful. On, on the jobs you have, you might have a really good 
uh, a job, making good money, and and things are good. You know, you just your life is in order. You have security. You have four hundred one k. You have all these good things in your life, uh, and you have a beautiful, wonderful family. You know, just just be grateful as a believer. Be grateful for the Lord has allowed you to have all those things. You know, the Lord has allowed you to have all these things and, and never get into that. Never get into that mindset. Well, I done it. I worked for this. I did this. Remember the eyes, okay? I was going over uh, uh, the scripture earlier. Uh, oh gosh, I think it was in the, the one before this. Um, and, I, and I counted how many times I, let me see, let me see if I can find it right here. Um, no, it's not it. That's not it. Um, it was... Let me see if I can read it right here. I think it was this one. Right here. Eyes. Okay? This is... This is... Uh, uh, this is... Um, uh, uh, Assyrian, the Assyrian king, the Assyrian king, okay, the Assyrian king, you know, never get, like, I, I'm try, I'm not changing subjects, remember what I was saying right now, I, I done this, I worked for this, I made this money, I, I built my kingdom, in other words, I, I'm the one that worked hard for this, I did it, don't never get into that, to that mindset, yes, you might have made the right choices in your life, yes, you might have done these things, Yes, it's good to, to strive, you know, to get that certificate or diploma or whatever it may have, uh, you know, all these things. But never get into the mindset of saying, I, 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 because the Lord easily giveth, easily taketh away. When you're a believer and you become like that, you, that's very shaky ground, very shaky ground. Now, I'm not saying this was a believer. We know that this was the king of Assyria. But listen to this. I'm just going to mention it, okay? Listen to this. I'm going to take it from uh, 23. Uh, whom have you been defying and ridic ridiculing? Against whom did you raise your voice? Okay, this is, the, this is the Lord. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah. It says, uh, at whom did you look with such haunty eyes? It was the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers, you have defied the Lord. You have said, he said to King, to, to king of the king of Assyria, he says, you have said with my, here we go, this is what the king of Assyria said, and the Lord's pulling them up on it. The Lord's pulling them up on it. It says, with many, with, with uh, the king of Assyria says, with my many chariots, I have conquered the highest mountains. Yes, the remotest peaks of Lebanon. Once again, I have cut down its tallest cedars and its finest cypress trees. I have reached its farthest heights and explored its deepest forests. I have dug wells in, my, in many foreign lands and refreshed myself with their water, with the sole of my foot, I have stopped up the rivers of Egypt. You hear all them eyes? I have done this. I did this. I deserve this. By my power, by my strength, I have done this. The Lord, that is very shaky ground to do. And even to get that attitude. The Lord knows your heart. Humble yourself. <clears throat> Everything you have... <clears throat> Everything you have and acquired, just just rewind it back. Who gave you the brain you have? Who gave you the hands you have? Who gave you the arms you have? Who gave you the legs you have? Who gave you the brain, once again, the intelligence in your brain? Who gave you your eyeballs to see, to hear? The Lord gave you that life. Without the Lord giving you that life and everything that came out good, because there's many who are born handicapped, many who suffer and they can't think right because they have mental, mental disabilities. 
and will most likely never prosper like that. Always give thanks to the Lord for what you have. He's allowed you to have that. Never get in that mindset that you did it. He's given you the abilities, the gifts to acquire these things. And when you acquire these things, it's to, it's to help. When you're a believer, it's to help others. Always, always remember this. And then it said, but have you not heard? <laughs> the Lord put him in check. You don't want the Lord to put you in check. But have you not heard? I decided this long ago. The Lord told, tells him, I decided this long ago. I'm the one that planned all that. I did that, the Lord says. You didn't do that. I decided this long ago. Long ago, I planned it, the Lord says. And now I'm making it happen. I planned for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. He gave them all this. He did it. He raised them up. The Lord is always in control in your life, my life. Amen? So that stuck out at me because I read that over again the other day and it's like, I, 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 wow, how arrogant he was. Don't, don't catch yourself in arrogance. Don't, when you're blessed with intelligence, when you're blessed with a gift, because there are many who are blessed with gifts of intelligence and others who are less fortunate. Like myself. But if you have that intelligence, thank the Lord you have that intelligence, that memory. Thank the Lord. He gave you that. Just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel, He gave them that knowledge, He gave them that wisdom. King Solomon, he gave him that wisdom, that intelligence. Praise the Lord for it. Be humble. Walk humble. Amen? Amen. So tomorrow, thank you for, for, uh, for listening to me. Thank you for allowing me to express my feelings, my opinions. Um... Thank you for allowing me, most of all, to share God's word, <laughs> God's miracles. Thank you so much. You know, it just, I love his word. I love his, I love him. I just love him so much. And I love my brothers and sisters. I love all of you. Uh, I pray for all of you. Um, truly, truly, I do. Um, um, just thank you once again for joining me. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so I'll see you tomorrow I'm kind of bewildered and lost for words right now but that's okay um, I don't think I'm uh, oh yeah Craig Keener I'm going to put his link in the descript, uh, description box please check him out his teachings uh, Very. he has a book too it's very very good I, I haven't read it yet but I want to read it but um, uh, Dr. Craig Keener very humble he has videos that he's made uh, I believe uh I think they're on the wadi.org. I'm not sure, uh, but I will um, put, play some links in the description box. So check them out, uh, Brother Craig Keener. Um, so, and thank you. Please join me again tomorrow as we continue in chapter 40 tomorrow, okay? So may you have a blessed day, blessed time, blessed night, wherever, whatever time you're watching this. Uh, and I pray all these things in our mighty and precious name of our Lord, God, and King, Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, Jesus Christ, our Messiah, Lord God and King, Holy Spirit, all in one. Blessed be Him. Thank you once again for joining me. Bye for now.